Well, hello everybody. Thank you so much for coming to the service today. This is the kids service for week three in August at North Park and I'm Krista and I'm really glad that you're here because all month long we've been learning about wisdom and our guest host is going to talk to you more about that when she comes along in just a few minutes. But I wanted to ask if any of you have ever done a maze puzzle, a maze puzzle on paper where you have to find the root into the center or something like that. Have you done one of those? Now, the other question I have is, have you ever been in an actual maze with your body where you had to walk through a maze? Sometimes people do mazes in the dark and they have to go on an exploration to try to find the right path through the maze to get out. Have you ever done that? Maybe you've done a corn maze. There's sometimes that happens around here in London where I'm recording today. And I've done a corn maze before. And I have to tell you that it was a little bit, um, well, not scary, but kind of, I don't know, it made my tummy feel funny because I didn't know which way to go. And there were never any signs to tell me where to go. Now, I know that that is the point of a maze, is that you have to figure out which way to go and sometimes you make mistakes, but I really like it when someone gives me signs about where to go. It's kind of like Lego. How many of you enjoy playing with Lego? I am always so impressed when people can take pieces of Lego and create something amazing out of it. When I play with Lego, I really like it when you get a set and they give you the book and it has the instructions and it tells you how to put together and what pieces go where and so on. I like the instructions. Maybe you just like to be creative and you don't like the instructions. But today we're going to be learning about why signs and instructions are an important part of learning about wisdom. So I'm going to send you now on to our super fun service and it's going to start with this month's worship song called I Run To You. And I hope you will get up off wherever maybe you're sitting or you're lying down like this and do maybe some of the dance moves and even if you don't like to dance i hope that you will sing and praise and worship god and after that we will have our guest host that i mentioned before we're going to have our movie story the guest host will be back and i'll see you again on the other side of all of that in just a few minutes okay enjoy the service i'll see you in a few minutes <music>
When I don't know what to do, you help me figure it out. I run to you. When I need a solution, I have no doubt that I will run to you. When I don't know what to do, you help me figure it out. God, I run to you. When I need a solution, I have no doubt. everybody, it's me, Haley. I thought today we could take a look at some of my past treasure hunting expeditions so you could see some of the perils of my profession. You've been warned, danger awaits. When you're searching for treasure, you're gonna need some wisdom. Wisdom is finding out what you should do and doing it. In other words, there's always planning involved. You shouldn't just rush in without thinking, like the time I went looking for treasures in the jungles of Peru. Okay, there I am, about to go into a cave, and I kinda missed that sign that says, watch out for large boulders. So, here's what happened. Signs are there for a reason, people. But, I learned my lesson. Look. Two paths leading to the same waterfall. The path on the right may be shorter, but look, there's a sign that says, caution, poison ivy. So I took the longer path and you know what happened? No calamine lotion necessary. <laughs> then later I got to the ancient ruins. There's a sign that says, warning, falling snakes. So guess what? I decided there's a safer place to explore. So when you're treasure hunting, it's important to look out for all of the warning signs. And as you'll find out in today's story, that's an important lesson in life too. A lesson I have already learned on my many, 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 many Peruvian adventures. <laughs> all right, not really. I've actually never been to Peru, but I'm getting pretty good at editing photos. Here's me on the moon. <laughs> All right, I'll see you in a few. Bye! The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Proverbs, chapter 22, verse 3. When Solomon became king as a young man, he asked God for one thing, wisdom. And God made him one of the wisest men in the world. Years later, many of Solomon's wise sayings were collected and written down in the book of Proverbs. Check out these wise words in Proverbs 22:3. Wise people see danger and go to a safe place, but childish people keep going and suffer for it. There's a lot to discover in these few short lines. First of all, it's important to remember to take time in your day to stop. Oops! It's easy to get so distracted that you don't stop. To take a breath and pay attention to what's going on around you. Second step, think. Look around you, look ahead, do you see danger? Ask yourself, if I keep doing what I'm doing, what's going to happen? If I say the first thing that pops into my head and talk back to my mom, well, that might just lead to a week of no screen time. If I keep playing this video game and playing and playing instead of studying, I might bomb the test. If I ignore the sign that says, playground closed for repairs, that could mean a trip to urgent care. God doesn't tell us the future, but he has given us the common sense to think through what is most likely to happen right now based on what's going on around us. Oh, which brings us to our third step, act. Once you've taken time to stop and think it through, 
it's time to make your move. Maybe you realize the safe place in this case is to hold your tongue and say, yes, ma'am. Maybe your safe place is setting a timer for only five more minutes of game time before you study. Maybe your safe place is to walk right past that closed down playground, no matter how cool it looks. Foolish people barrel ahead without pausing to think. Wisdom stops, thinks, then acts. From the very beginning, God designed people with the ability to think and act according to his wisdom. And that's still true for each one of us today. So don't forget to stop, think, and then act. And as Solomon reminds us, wise people see danger and go to their safe place. But childish people, they keep going and suffer for it. Listen to what King Solomon wrote. Wise people see danger and go to a safe place, but childish people keep going and suffer for it. Danger can come in all shapes and sizes. I'm not just talking about physical danger. Danger could be a suspicious looking website. It could be a friend you shouldn't hang out with. It could be a temptation to break a rule. And you might not have a sign to warn you when there's danger, but tell the truth. You know when something is dangerous, or at least you know when something might be dangerous. And that's your cue to try something different. Avoid the danger altogether. Or it's your cue to find out more information. When you want to do something you think might be dangerous, or if someone else is trying to get you to do something dangerous, don't just keep going without thinking about the consequences. Stop and think. Think about what Jesus would do, or talk to someone who's wiser than you. It might save you from trouble. Maybe even save you from a falling snake or two. Ah! Oh! It's not funny. The one thing to remember today is this. Think before you act. Look for the warning signs and avoid the danger. Then you'll be safe the next time you go to Antarctica. <laughs> that looks real, right? It totally looks real. <laughs> I'll see you next time. change of scenery. What say I climb on top of the minivan and I film myself while we drive down the road? Good idea, right? Uh, what say no? Okay, fine. We'll do that next time. Meanwhile, I've got a fantastic story from this kid Levi my cousin knows. Now, Levi's mom likes to read a verse at breakfast every day. One morning, she hands Levi her Bible app and says, try this one. So, Levi reads it out loud. Proverbs 22.3, wise people see danger and go to a safe place, but childish people keep going and suffer for it. Levi's like, how do you see danger? Unless it's a meteorite blazing in from outer space. Levi wonders if he needs special glasses or laser ray vision goggles. But mom tells Levi that if he just pays close attention, you'll see the signs. So Levi decides he's going to look for signs of danger all day. In PE, the teacher says they have to run eight laps. And Levi panics because that's a whole mile. He thinks about telling his teacher that he feels sick to his stomach and can't run. But then it's like a warning signal goes off in his head. He thinks it through and realizes that if he says he's sick, his teacher will call his mom. 
and mom will make him miss art class and come home early. And take icky medicine. Blech. So, Levi reads the signs and decides to run a mile after all. After school, Levi works on one of his most awesome Lego builds ever. But then, his brother runs in and totally messes everything up. Levi is steaming mad. He wants to grab his brother and just pinch his arm. But he stops and thinks it through. If he does that, he'll cry and look up at him with big sad eyes, like Baby Yoda. And who can ever hurt Baby Yoda? So Levi cools down and asks him to help me pick up, please. Then after dinner, Levi really wants a soda, but he's not supposed to have caffeine at night. Levi stops and thinks it through. If he drinks a soda now, he'll be wide awake at 10 p.m. and midnight and 2 a.m. So, Levi grabs some juice instead. And at bedtime, mom asks if he spotted any danger that day. Levi grins and says, I saw the signs and it opened up my eyes. I saw the signs. And mom says, my work here is done. So kids, drink caffeine after 7.32, you should not. But do always remember that wisdom is finding out what you should do and doing it. Hey mom, about taping the show on the roof of the van. Yeah, oh, okay, <laughs> got it, yep. See you guys next time. Welcome back everybody. I was wondering if you would like to do a little task with me, a little experiment kind of. If you happen to have a small tube of toothpaste at your house, or maybe you have just a little bit of toothpaste left in a big container, and it's okay with your family that you use the toothpaste, um, I'd love you to pause the video and grab that toothpaste and also a plastic or a paper plate. I have a real plate here, but you just need some kind of plate and toothpaste. Make sure you ask for permission and pause the video and then go and get these things and come right back. Okay, here's what we're going to do. With your plate, what I want you to do is you're going to open your toothpaste and as best as you can, it doesn't have to be fast, but I want you to get every single tiny little bit of that toothpaste out onto the plate. Okay, and pause the video if you need to, if you're not doing it at the same time as me. And here is where our experiment begins. Are you ready? Here's all my toothpaste. This is the lid from my tiny little package of toothpaste. Okay, here's the experiment. On the count of three, I want you to do whatever you have to do using your hands to get the toothpaste back inside the toothpaste container. Ready? One, two, stop. Can you get toothpaste back inside of the container once it's been squeezed out? I know you think you wanna try. But the truth of the matter is, you can't actually get the toothpaste out of the tooth once it's been taken out. That's what I want to talk to you about today. You see, like toothpaste being out of the tube, when we make decisions, we can't take them back. Whatever decisions or choices that we make, there's always consequences. There's always some kind of outcome. Something happens after we make the decision. Sometimes what happens after a decision is something wonderful and lovely. Like maybe you decide to invite a friend over to play and you have the most wonderful time and you make some memories and everybody's happy. Or maybe you make a decision to give a gift to someone and you warm their heart and you make their day. Those would be positive decisions or outcomes. But sometimes, like our guest host was telling us and our story today showed us, that if we don't stop 
before we make a decision, if we don't think before we act, we could end up doing something that ends up with a bad outcome. It could be hurtful, it could be even dangerous. I want you to think about uh, some of the situations in your life. And I'm gonna tell you just about one that's happened to me. My family and I went um, exploring a couple of years ago on a trip to a place where there are a bunch of caves. And you can crawl down some ladders, excuse me, you can climb down some ladders into these caves and explore around, really exciting. But we got to this one cave and you had to climb a ladder to get up into a spot where you could squeeze through a tiny little break or crevice, it's called, between two rocks in the cave to get out and above where this place was. So my children went ahead and they crawled through one by one and then my husband went ahead and I stayed at the back. I wanted to make sure everybody got through and while I was waiting, I kept reading the sign out front that said, warning, very tight space ahead. And do you know what happened to me? I got this really uncomfortable feeling in my tummy and it was like a warning saying to me, this is not a good idea for you. Do you know what? In my head, I really wanted to crawl through that space because everybody else in my family had done it. And though it was um, tricky and it was tight, they kind of giggled and laughed through it and were so happy to be on the other side and called for me, come on, mom, come on, mom, come on, mom. But this feeling in my tummy and that sign right there that said warning made my self on the inside say, I don't think this is a good idea for me. So in my head, I wanted to do it, but I looked at the sign and I listened to what was happening on my insides and I decided this is not a good idea for me. And so I didn't crawl through that space and it would have maybe been an amazing adventure and maybe it would have turned out okay in the end. But what I did was I stopped and I thought about what was going to happen and then I made a decision. And the consequence was, although I missed out on that experience, I was safe and I didn't get hurt and I wasn't scared. And my family was happy and excited that they had done it, but I had to make the best choice for me. And so I want you to think about that bottom line today, my friends, which is you've got to think before you act. You have to stop and think before you let those words come out of your mouth and say something that you might regret. Because just like the toothpaste out of the toothpaste tube, once you speak those words, you can't take them back. So if we can learn how to be good at stop, think, act now, you're gonna do really well in life because you will have grown in great wisdom. Let's pray. Oh my goodness, Lord God, what an amazing message for us today. Thank you for reminding all of us that we need to stop and think before we make decisions, before we say something that we might regret later. May we use wisdom to be careful with our words and to make good choices for our lives. God, and we're going to need help. So would you be with us every day as we make choices and as we have um, conversations and we talk with other people. I thank you, God, that this summer is so wonderful for all of us and we're enjoying the weather while being safe. And we look forward to joining together in person very soon. I pray all these things in Jesus' name. And everybody out there said, Amen. Have a good week, everybody. I'll see you in two more weeks. Cody's going to be back next week, so I'll see you in two weeks. Bye-bye.